over the last few years, we've seen a significant increase in the availability of power banks featuring USB-C power delivery. These power banks have become excellent power supplies for electronics projects. With the help of different trigger cables, you can access a range of voltages and currents, offering flexibility and convenience. But what if I told you there were even more robust solutions out there? These alternatives are built to endure the demanding conditions of professional environments, including frequent charging and discharging cycles. I better use my little bag of tricks. Today we are looking at mini V-mount batteries. Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. We are taking a look at a small rig VB50 battery today. Here's a nice instruction manual. Stickers. Let's take this little rascal out of the box. Now the best part. Protective film be gone. So satisfying. There's a nice cover on top of all the ports. V-mount batteries come in various capacities. We'll go over that in a moment. This battery has a 50 watt hour capacity. It consists of one group of four 18650 lithium ion cells in series. These cells are managed by a battery management system or BMS. This is an important safety component that manages charging and discharge of the battery. In a size comparison, this battery is about the same volume as a Jetson Nano slash NX and is approximately a quarter of the volume of a Jetson AGX Orin. Let's go over the ports on the top of the battery left to right. First, we have the 8 volt plug. Then we have the 12 volt plug. The plugs are different sizes. In the upper right, we have the USB-A quick charge port, or QC. This particular port puts out several different voltages and conforms to the quick charging standards. And then finally, we have the USB-C power delivery port. This can deliver 5, 9, 12, 15, or 20 volts up to 45 watts. You can charge the battery through this port using a 45 watt charger. On the side of the battery is a DTAP port. The output here is non-regulated. You will see output here between 12.8 and 16.8 volts. You can also use this as a charging port up to 5 amps. The other side of the battery has the power button. The back of the battery has the V-mount. There's also a sticker which lists the available voltage and current available on each interface. Extremely handy. And then on the front of the battery, we have an OLED screen. This lists important information like the voltages being used and the amount of charge left. Finally, on the bottom, we have the battery plate mount interface. There are very many ways to attach a V-mount battery to a project. This is the smallest V-mount mounting plate I could find. Slide the battery into the groove and lock it in place. From the side, you can see the two quarter 20 mounting bolts. The V mount on the battery also has mounting points, a quarter inch and a three eighths inch. We're fully charged. Let's test out the D-tap. This is a D-tap to a barrel jack cable. We're center positive. And we get 16.59 volts. This is great for a Jetson Orin or Xavier. For devices that do not have built-in USB-C PD, you can get what are called trigger cables. Trigger cables have the built-in power delivery and EMARC chips, which negotiate which voltage will be delivered to a device. This enables use with a Jetson Orin Nano or Xavier NX, which does not have built-in USB PD. This is a 15 volt trigger cable. Let's plug it into the USB-C port. Center positive. And 14.96 volts as we expect. And a major surprise, if we use a 12 volt trigger, we get 11.98 volts. It's a great time to be alive. As luck would have it, if we test the 12 volt port, we get 12.13 volts. And the biggest surprise of all, if we switch over to the 8 volt port, we get 7.99 volts. How are you going to keep them down on the farm with that? For our demo setup, we're powering a Jetson AGX Orin developer kit and a 7 inch 4K monitor from the battery. The Orin is being powered from the DTAP connector, the monitor from the USB C port using a 12 volt trigger cable. Connected to the Jetson is an Orbeck Femto Bolt RGBD camera. The Femto Bolt is a licensed Microsoft Connect design. We'll do a review on the channel soon. We also have a Theacam USB camera, which we reviewed previously. 
The Jetson is running two programs. One takes input from the Femtovolt and displays it as an animated point cloud. The other program takes an input from the Theacam and runs a face detect neural net on it. Combined, that's around 60 to 70% maximum load on the Orin. Running this demo, a fully charged battery will discharge in about an hour here. Here's a similar demo on a Jetson Orin Nano. The Jetson is connected to the battery via the DTAP port. The monitor is connected to the 12 volt port. The Femto Bolt is connected to the Jetson. And the Jetson is running the same animated point cloud program. Running this demo, a fully charged battery will last about 2 hours and 15 minutes. The display shows the ports in use, the port configuration, and the amount of charge left in the battery. V-mount batteries are widely used in professional settings, particularly in the film and broadcast industry, due to their high capacity and versatility. V-mount batteries come in different configurations, which determine their capacity and overall performance. The available interfaces will depend on the particular battery. Even within the same brand, these interfaces and available voltages and power vary. In general, the larger the battery, the more current is available. You will need to check these specifications thoroughly to understand if it meets your particular requirements. Each battery may have its own quirks. For example, on this battery model, if you draw 5 volts from the USB-A port, you may only draw 5 volts from the USB-C port concurrently. Here are some common configurations you might encounter. The 50 watt hour batteries are usually four 18650 lithium ion cells connected in series with a single parallel group. These cells are connected to a battery management system. The 99 watt hour batteries consist of four series connected cells with two parallel groups, resulting in a capacity of 99 watt hours. These are the most popular as they are the maximum capacity battery that can be flown on a commercial aircraft. The next class up is the 155 watt hour batteries. These are four series connected cells with three parallel groups. As the batteries get larger, the cell type may remain 18650. However, some manufacturers, like the one seen here, use fewer, larger batteries. This results in higher energy density. Here, the small rig 212 uses four 21700 lithium ion cells in series with three parallel groups. These cells have higher capacities, which results in 212 watt hours of storage. One of the most important features of V-mount batteries and power banks is the built-in battery management system, or BMS. The BMS is crucial because it monitors and manages the performance of the battery, ensuring safe operation. BMS provides overcharge protection. This prevents the battery from being overcharged, which can damage the cells and reduce battery life. Over-discharge protection ensures the battery does not discharge beyond safe limits, protecting the cells from damage. Temperature monitoring maintains safe operating temperatures to prevent overheating, which can lead to safety hazards. And balancing ensures all cells within the battery are charged and discharged evenly, maximizing the battery's efficiency and lifespan. A good BMS also has overcurrent and short circuit protection. To charge the battery, you can use a USB PD charger or a DTAP charger. USB power delivery is easy to integrate into your projects. There are lots of breakout boards available. Let me know in the comments below if you want to know more about that. When wiring up your projects, use a multimeter to test everything. It's no mistake that you see a fire extinguisher in the videos. Also, the batteries store a lot of energy. You need to respect the power that they contain.